yung support system, iba din po kasi yung support system if your parents or your sibling or someone really close to you, alam namin na mas makakapagbigay sila ng mas maganda at clear na servisyo para sa mga kliyente natin. Diba? So, we go out din po by, by giving more to our social responsibilities. So, hindi lang natatapos po yung ginagawa namin service within the industry. We go out, we go beyond. You really need our help. Like, for example, kailangan ng um, exam hub, na online exam hub, pwede tayo maghanap ng ganun. Um, assurance with the customer that we will not parang abandon you. So, it really increases the awareness. Also, a hearing person, yung a listening person, na makikinig lang siya dun sa mga sentiments mo. Um, I've learned to delegate. Yun po siguro isa kong stress to delegate talaga. Um, para at least yun nga, maging independent siya, matuto din siya na nag-mold sa akin. So, it's really that purpose that really push me along the way. Hindi lang naman for this year, but I think for the coming year. Buenas noches, Senor Ivy, Senora <laughs> Jay. I'm so happy that you have this show where we can all come together once a week. And I saw the mission of of life insurance and I felt like my talent is in management. I know mas malaki yung impact for the advocacy if I become a leader because I know that's what I'm good at. I'm willing. I have that sense of responsibility to take care of people. So what keeps you going is when you see how you have helped or supported somebody become successful in the business. But as a leader, as a leader, I really need to snap out of it right away. Number one, stick with the mission. Number two, find a way to make your presence felt. Number three, is to stay professional, keep professional. And number four, uh, rework the structure, upgrade it, so that magkakaroon na pa rin naman na ulit ng cadence yung office. You have a responsibility and you need to stay healthy. When times are good, that's not the time to, 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 ano, to throw money around. Because as sure as the sun sets, talagang there will be hard times. Alam ko na yun eh, during tough times, that's the time you put in good money. Growth mindset is important in business, but especially in our business because for me, kasi growth mindset means we believe that we can develop people. A leader creates an environment where the team members, your people, will bloom, di ba? Sa pagmagulo yung panahon, di ba? The, the discipline will kick in eh. Because it's health, it's life, di ba? Tayo dapat ang front and center ngayon eh. Myself. And of course, yung, yung, ano, eh, yung support ng family, support ng friends, and of course, the mentors, yun yung nag-propel sa akin in this industry. Uh, integrity, di ba, in agency leadership, they need to feel and see na alam ko yung sinasabi ko, that isa ko sa kanila. So may group page na rin kami agad, right? May group page na kami. Ang dami namin GC. Meron kami GC sa ganito, may WhatsApp. What works with them? Works with them. So kung hindi nag so hindi ka naman nag I value family, security, and health more than the business. Uh, the people is really having a hard time adapting to the new one, the technology. That's normal. Now, then, pagdating ng pandemic, wala na eh, wala na choice, but to, for them to adapt. Leadership is leadership, regardless of platform. It's uh, something that you learn. Leadership is service. Leadership is motivation. Leadership is creation. Leadership is relationship. If you don't have that relationship, you don't have that foundation, the virtual leadership will not work. I need to, ano, I need to make sure that ako yung mauna. Your technology, your proposal, should be better, faster, and cheaper. We need to, we need to make sure that we inspire, and, we need to inspire and move our people to have that growth mindset. Technology is here to stay. If we don't accept technology, we die. As a leader, we need to be patient. We need to make sure that we guide them more than anything. Life is beautiful <laughs> and you know, everything is beautiful for me as of this time. Um, yung ginugol ko talaga yung buong, <laughs> buong oras ko sa paghahanap all over the Philippines. Wala pong agency business na walang mag-leader. It was building lives, building leaders. Ang dami pa talagang magagaling na pwedeng maging leader industry na to. Family 
support is very important in doing the agency business. I'm so fortunate that my family are all into this business. <laughs> Usapan kami kapat na mag-bold in na tayo, no? mag-full force na tayo. Pag tinitingnan ko talaga yung progress ng economy ng isang lugar, yung saturation ng business, yung, ano, it, it takes a lot of research. Huwag padalos-dalos. Tinestablish ko muna yung pwede kong kausapin. A person who has the center of influence. Daming magagaling sa kanya-kanyang mga field nila sa industry. Hindi pwede dito ang atras abante. Because if you have a deep faith, nothing is impossible. So believe. Most I be, God is so good that uh, He gave us no, this, uh, all the blessings that uh, right now the family, while there are businesses that were badly affected in this pandemic times, we also know that there are so many businesses that are flourishing. So the people who are working in these industries, who are making good during the pandemic times, are actually very potential big market for us. The need for life insurance in medical life and medical insurance become more real and urgent. People now consider setting aside their funds for life and medical insurance as one of their top in their priorities. As people are just seeing what the agency had achieved. Uh, what they did not see are the story behind, the you know, story of failures behind the agency. People that don't have confidence in their leader, but more importantly, they have confidence in themselves. In the power of practice, kailangan para para mga master natin yung lahat ng ginagawa natin, but we have to develop leaders. Yung lahat tayo, parang meron pagkakataon na maging leader, given the opportunity, kaya the power of uh, relationship. So, pinaka-joy na masasabi natin sa career ko is pumakita ko na lahat ng mga kasamahan natin sa pisipo. Good evening, Jay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our ninth episode entitled Understanding the New Generation, Gen Y and Gen X, for a purpose between ages 18 to 40 years old. This should be very relevant given that our population has a median age of 24 years old. Jay, I just realized that we are, or at least we are, in terms of uh, number of years of service, millennials. Uh, hopefully, hindi masyadong obvious, although my white hair betrays me. Lol. Good evening, Mr. Ivy, and to our audience. Special shout out to all the Gen Ys and Zs joining us tonight. Welcome again, everyone, to Leaders in Action, your weekly Thursday 8 p.m. habit. Tonight is going to be another lit episode as we try to better know and understand our millennials and zoomers who now comprise a big chunk no a big segment of our workforce and customer base and we believe that this topic is very important given the expansion thrust of the insurance industry kailangan talagang malaman natin kung paano sila mag-isip kung ano ba ang mahalaga sa kanila so that we can attract more of them to join our industry. But before we dive into our episode tonight, we would like again to thank our special guest last week, Agency Manager Henry Evangelista, for sharing his COVID story with us. He shared how having a very positive attitude and a strong faith can really be an effective antidote against the virus. He also shared and confirmed with us how expensive it is to be hospitalized due to COVID. Kaya namang very important that always you should, we should be financially prepared. That's very true, Jay. And uh, Manager Henry also encouraged us to be confident each time that life gives us a test. He reminds us that our past experiences, both the failures and the wins, already prepared us to prevail upon 
these future challenges. Kaya naman, positive always ang mindset. On leadership, he emphasized the value of integrity, of never giving up, and once again, having a strong faith. You see, our previous speakers mentioned that COVID has significantly raised the awareness of both medical and life insurance. They also mentioned that digitalization was made more prominent by this crisis. And when we talk about digital technology, automatically, we talk about the millennials and Generation Z who are so digital-centric. Yes, that's why they are referred to as the digital natives because it just comes so natural to them. Um, kaya naman they, ano to, they add so much value, especially at this time. Uh, personally, I am not. I, I I am comfortable with technology, but I cannot claim that I am tech savvy. No, buti na lamang I have a millennial daughter and a Zoomer son, no, so that. Every time na magkakaroon ako ng problem and needs assistance on anything digital, tumatakbo ako kagad sa kanila. And each time, I am shook. Grabe how comfortable, how easy it is, it is easy for them no, to navigate through the different kinds of gadgets. And one thing, Mr. Ivy, no, that I observe among these generations is that they are more confident they are always on the go and they are achievement oriented and they love to flex their achievements no lalong lalo na no yung mga kanilang things that they are so proud of especially when they are doing it with their squad ay nako jay yung mga words nila kailangan nating i-google para maintindihan minsan nga nakakarig ako ng words ng woke adulting Draking, stun. Eh, talagang kailangan ko yung uh, malaman ko anong ibig sabihin. On the other hand, uh, they have very high expectations from leaders and from employers. So the question is, how do we approach these generations in a manner that we speak to them? Yung bang hindi sila magsashut off, magsashut down sa atin. And on the other hand, what do they need naman to learn to deal with Gen X and boomers. Yes, kasi talagang kapag hindi natin sila inintindi, malolos in translation talaga tayo, lalong-lalo na sa mga terminologies nila. That's why we thought that it is uh, wise no, to have in our program somebody who can help us understand these young generations. No? Um, we, uh, ano to, no? parang... Uh, Ina-appreciate natin that more agencies are aggressively recruiting young advisors and also appointing young agency leaders. No? And to effectively support them to have higher chances no, of being successful, it is therefore imperative and important for us to know how they think, how they behave, and what they value. Dear leaders, you have the chance, no? you can join our conversation with our very special guest by simply no, writing your comments or suggestions on the comment section below. This is your chance to uh, be clarified on anything that you would want to know about our Gen Ys and Zs. So, let us now welcome no, somebody who will help us share no, how we can better attract, manage, no, and develop these young generations. Incidentally, uh, our guest no, sheriff for tonight has a good number of years in the insurance industry in his previous life. That's why he has a very good idea of what our industry needs. So talagang perfect na perfect na siya ang magsishare sa atin tonight. So, Please help me welcome a good friend and Job Street Country Manager, Mr. Philip Gioka. Good evening. Hi, Philip. Hi, Hi. 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 Good evening. Hello. Good evening, Philip. Um, thank you uh, for accepting our invite and to share your insights. Uh, baka pagkatapos ng session ito, maintindihan ko na yung dalawa kong anak. <laughs> sana, sana. Sana makatulong. 
Hi, Philip. Welcome to Leaders in Action. Thank you. Before, oh, oh, no, I am so stoked to see you tonight. Flex mo naman sa amin kung ano ang pinagkakaabalahan mo. Well, we've been working for um since the pandemic, uh work from, from working from home and we we needed to pivot many things, no, in the office. Um we're lucky that we are in a digital space so we can continue working. Um on the personal side, I'm quite excited to Transfer to a new house. Uh, hopefully, hey. in a month. Wow. <laughs> the pandemic, it's been like delayed for a bit. So, hopefully, this is this is the time. Congratulations, ah, uh, to your to you and to your wife and family, no. So, pisa na natin, Philip. Kasi alam mo, based on our experience, ang bilis to magkumpo ng panahon, eh. Dito mo na sa iyong uh, company na Job Street. What percentage of your workforce ah uh, Gen Gen Y and Z? Okay, so the young generations now compose of 80% of the total population of Job Street. Um, and so, coming mga matatanda, we're just <laughs> 20%. But within the 20%, meron pang ano dyan, uh, mas bata na kakapunta lang sa Gen, sa, sa Gen Z. Wow, 80%. If, if there is one word to describe this 80%, uh, what is that one word? So, sinabi ni Jay kanina, digital natives. I would yeah. say connect. Connect is okay. the word. Why why connect? Because we need to connect to them differently uh, and in a way we need to connect so that we can manage them differently. Uh, it, before we proceed, just we're just wondering, no? With this pandemic, how did this affect the uh this generation of y and z okay so let me just give a context first uh para mas makita yung shift so in the past uh before the pandemic we can see that millennials and zoomers are always um being branded to be um jumping from one job to the other um they are always self-centered they always wanted to just be on their own but because of the pandemic, certain shifts in behavior came about. So now, um, millennials and Zoomers are now more focused on job security, health, and welfare of the family. So, which is a big shift because they went out of their comfort zone, on out of their own, and now focus on the family and the community. Well, I think that's a pretty good shift, no? Now, uh, we understand that you recently came out with a study about uh, itong ang, uh, generation and so. Uh, if you may, Philip, uh, please share muna the demographics uh, that you covered in your study. Okay, so we've been having several studies uh, on the different generations because it's very important for hirers, uh, company owners, and leaders to understand um, what they are made of. So specific to leadership, communication, um, getting, getting them to um, a certain goal, um, and also attracting them. So these are a lot of things that is important for the hirer. So we have um, three studies currently, pre-pandemic study, uh, the post-pandemic, the within the pandemic, and also a global study. So in the Philippines, we actually looked at the demographics. So currently, uh, ang, ang population ng workers ngayon ay nasa 40 million, but because of the pandemic, it has cut down into uh, 35 million kasi may 5 million pa tayong unemployed uh, because of the pandemic. 80% of the millennials and the Zoomers were badly affected by the pandemic. That means 80% has lost their jobs. Oh my. Uh, over over the Gen Z because the hirers prefer the people with experience. Yes. Now, so marami talagang apektuhan na Gen Y and Gen Z. Um, but when you look at the demographics of these people, uh, you would see that most of them are coming back to the office now uh, on a work from home setup. Sixty uh, percent of them are now um, still looking for a job but they have the best ability to adapt or tinatawag nating they're agile in working uh, and so they can be adapted adaptable to many situations so 
yun yung coverage ng study uh, and there's so many things and I can share them uh, we can share them to the, the study um, siguro in the discussion as we go on when you in addition to the usual age uh, description of the gen gen generations what other characteristics do you use to differentiate let's say a gen x from a gen y and from a gen z okay so siguro yung major stereotype na lang para we can understand uh, each of the generations so when we say uh, boomers these these are the people who are very much workaholic gen z <laughs> they started to have a work life balance however uh -huh. kind of cynical in many ways why uh, the gen y or the millennials these are the guys or mga mga nagsimula ng having you know mobile phones uh, internet and together with their parents the gen x they both grew up and tried to figure out the technology that is there so they fend for themselves and try to find out what is really out there so meron silang ano meron silang uh, view of the world that it is my way of looking uh, and Gen Z because naintindihan na ng mga magulang na Gen X ang mga Gen Y at mga pagkukulang nito the Gen Z or the Zoomers are now the better millennials they say um, because aside from you know having um, success as a goal the success is not just themselves but also reaching out to the community and creating value for the world. So, yun yung kanilang mga tinitingnan. Um, so, yun yung mga, ano, mga stereotypes. No? But again, these are stereotypes of generation that is a collective uh, characteristic of about 15 to 20 years. No? So, yun yung lumalabas. Of course, marami pa rin variants dyan kung ano-ano yung mga cuts ng bawat tao. But having said that, so, the way they lead people is also reflective of their generation. So, for example, mm -hmm. ang baby boomers, ang gusto nila, partners tayo, tsaka maraming meeting. Magmi-meeting tayo. <laughs> ang mga, <laughs> ang mga, ano, gen, gen, uh, mga why naman, um, gusto nila yung team. Oh, casual lang, usapan lang. Yung mga Z, uh, autonomy. Gusto nila may autonomy. Gusto ko yung ako lang. Uh, sarili lang um, and if you want to talk to me just reach out to me at saka yung pag reach out sa kanila is on digital also so iba iba yung ano nila iba iba yung kanilang way of communicating and leading um, so very competitive silang lahat right very competitive sila very hard working mission driven at saka yun na nga ang mga Gen Z tinitingnan natin on giving meaning to the world and adding value yung kanyang tinitingnan. So, so parang do, doon lang sa dalawa no yung isa sabi natin yung millennials parang for myself. Tapos mm -hmm. the next generation is for more on for yeah. the for the more for the world no parang ganun. So again if you're somebody uh, dealing with you're the boss and you're dealing with with these two iba kagad ng iba kagad ng approach correct iba kagad ng approach especially if you're a Gen X um yeah. mahilig ka sa meeting oh. so, how would you like to have meet with the Gen Y um and Gen Y hindi pwedeng meeting gusto niya uh, collaborative hindi pwedeng one on one mas gusto niya team working in fact gusto ng Gen Y siya yung magli-lead ng meeting so for a leader it's good to assign a project assign a task to a Y uh, and so, he will be the one to conduct the meeting or orchestrate the meeting. Sa Gen Z naman, iba. Kaya gusto niya one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> gusto niya one-on-one -on, -one on my time. No? So, give him a task, he will finish it, but on his own time. I think good point, no? before I give the floor to Jay, good point you mentioned na for Gen Y, uh, maganda sa mga leaders na bigyan sila ng pagkakataon na mag-lead because gusto rin naman nila yun. Ano? So, it's yes. also harnessing them and developing them. Correct, correct. Jay? Yeah, very interesting uh, information, no, Philip. I'm sure yung mga leaders natin are already taking down notes, no, para talagang madadala nila ito. Uh, Philip, as members of the workforce, how do you describe these generations? Uh, are they more inclined to being employees or being entrepreneurs at 
saan sila na-attract na profession or na industry? Sige, okay. Very good question. So, doon muna tayo sa employment kasi meron din konting attraction sa entrepreneurship. Doon sa mga naghahanap ng trabaho na generation Y, they're more attracted to banking and finance healthcare and consultancies no if you if you notice merong merong ano diyan merong common trait banking uh, sales healthcare consultancy ano sila eh? gusto nila yung very connected sila they they have you know information at their fingertips so that they could be good consultants and you know being good consultant doesn't necessarily mean nowadays to have the experience but you can actually get the experience from you know connections from the internet and they can give you good advice on the gen z naman they're into majority now when you look at the philippines they're attracted to you know um, accounting back office support advertising digital marketing jobs if you look at that uh, scope medyo may flexibilities doon and they like the flexibility kasi they can do the job on their own time. They want to do their jobs on, you know, online and study online. So, yung flexibility is very important sa kanila kasi more than the job, they want to actually add value to the world. So, ginagamit lang nila yung trabaho so that they can give value. Okay. At ano naman sila? Uh, more ba sila sa entrepreneurship? Do they also consider that? Okay, so in the in 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 the light of the pandemic and pre-pandemic, when you look at the pre-pandemic, mas marami yung nag-try um, being entrepreneurs, and that's why um, some of them went into digital right after when the pandemic started. Unfortunately, hindi madami sa kanila ang nag-succeed because of two things. Number one, um, kulang pa kasi yung kanilang capital, kulang pa kanila yung budget to do that. And that's why a lot of them tried the online selling. And that's why insurance is one of an avenue for them to actually explore. But when you look at that insurance world, and, and a lot of leaders will probably know, some of them or a lot of them um, do not pursue it as much. Maybe because, number one, they needed financial support as well. Second, is that we need to understand that they also need training and development. So we need to put them in a program where they can learn and also touch the, the more important uh, aspect of their being, which is, it's for me, what is the mission about and what is the value of this job? So, ang ganda nga sana sa insurance kasi, di ba? It's saving lives savings, finances. We need to talk to them more on that. And the way we communicate to them is very important. Thanks, Philip, no, for driving that point that it's very important because our audience really now is really for uh, from the insurance industry. And as you have said, no, this is the right time. No? Kasi sabi mo kanina, parang 60% diba, are ano, employable. Diba? Mm -hmm. Pero hindi lang sila nakukuha ngayon. But given that they value the mission, they want to do things that can help others, insurance perfect match eh no so kailangan lang talaga kung paano natin maipo-position to dito sa ating mga Gen Ys at Gen Zs yes. Mr. IB So really maganda going to let's say they they're also quite interested to let's say banking finance insurance no Now if a company from any of those industries for example nasa insurance ano ang dapat ni emphasize ng kumpanya o ng isang leader para medyo makinig sa kanya ng mas matagal uh, ang isang uh, millennial or zoomer. Okay, so good question. Um, because it's very competitive, di ba? Um, mm. One of the things, tingnan muna natin yung Gen Y. Ano ba yung tinitingnan niya? Una, tinitingnan niya yung salary, yung benefit, training, and development. Mm. Um, so, what an insurance practitioner leader or um, agency manager can do is talk about these three things, salary, benefits, and training and development. Of course, you can always package it that we do not, do not have really salaries, benefits, um, but you can do that by offering them what is the commission, 
what's the incentive trips, what are the you know developmental um, trainings that we get into the insurance, the many uh, application of you know um, the insurance industry to giving the economy helping also generate jobs. So, dapat mag-focus siya doon when talking to a millennial. On the other side, which is the Gen Z, ang kailangan pag-usapan niya dyan is career development. Kasi importante sa kanya, what is my value as a Gen Z to, to the industry, to Philippines, to the world? Yun ang kailangan niya. But one of the things that is very difficult is the leadership. As you said earlier, IB, uh, malaki ang demand ng mga, ng mga batang ito sa mga leaders kasi you have to walk the talk. So they have to show, as a leader in the insurance, you need to show that you are walking the talk. You have cr created certain credibilities and you can show that. But the other thing is, you know, how do you talk to them? That's important. Paano ba kakausapin ang Gen Y? Ang Gen Y kasi, gusto niya Siya yung pupuntahan mo, mag-uusap kayo one-on-one. -on -one. Gusto niya uh, nasa leader, na, uh, in a group, bihirang-bihira siya na, na umaten ng group, no? Pero pag nandun siya sa group, gusto niya siya yung magig, magiging standout. And so, you, as a leader, you need to create those scenarios and environment for the Gen Y to have that. Doon sa Gen Z, yun, iba talaga yun. Um, communication sa kanya is always on digital. Email me, uh, give me a Viber or Messenger, and I will read it on my own. But, ang maganda sa kanya, babasahin naman niya talaga yun. Pero if he is attracted or a Gen Z is attracted to your style of leadership because you have built credibility in the industry, the attraction will be there. Again, for clarity y and z kasi ako nga ang perception ko y and z almost the same yes. ngayon i i realized that almost opposite eh, so when you say uh y which is the millennial anong age yan tapos yung z anong age niyan okay yung yung mga ages ngayon na 25 uh, to 40 these are the y sorry millennial 25 to 40 yes e. and the uh, yung mas mababa <laughs> Yun na yung mga... 24. Yes. Yeah. 18 to 24. 24. Yung, yung Gen Z, kasi 24 years old pa lang sila, marami pa tayong matidiscovery in terms of their characteristics oh. Oh. Uh, as we as we move forward. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to ano, to to reach out to these people? Talaga gabang purely digital lang approach or it can be a, ano, a combination o personal pa rin ang gusto nila? Um, combination is a good, is always a good mix, no? Um, but the first attraction for them is actually on digital. digital so, talaga. When, digital talaga and then followed through by a personal, um, you know, discussion or meeting. But again, ang, ang mahirap kasi, pareho sila, ayaw nila ng mahabang usapan. <laughs> very, very straight to the point, no? Uh, okay, kasi yung Gen Note X, that, mga leaders. Uh, note that. Yung, yung mga Gen X saka baby boomers, ikukwento yung buong buhay nila bago sa different <laughs> point, di ba? So, I, I also observe that in the office, no? So, the, the most concise, best way of communicating talaga sa kanila, kasi ang, ang attention span ng mga yan, napaka-ikli. We, we 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 started to have meetings at, at one hours. Hindi na yan, mawawala na yan. 30 minutes, hindi pa rin. Pwede pa mga 15 minutes. Ngayon, in the, the, the digital space, they, spe they they give you the agenda and pre-read. In 15 minutes, the meeting should be finished. Lalo na yung mga Gen Z. Yung mga Gen Y, kaya pa 30 minutes to an hour, pero you lose them after that. Grabe ah, grabe talaga sa ano, ibig sabihin also ang demand nito for the leader or for the manager or whoever is supervising them. It takes a lot of preparation, ano, para to make sure that uh, concise and uh, substantive yung within that 15 to 30 minutes sa window. And, and, and not only that, IB, um dapat yung substance kasi yeah. karamihan sa kanila they do research Google, 'di ba? Yung so, pa, oh. The leader must be able to position the 
the information in a in a very good way talagang factual siya at may experience na ilalagay kasi if you don't add value again they will not listen to you very important yung pag kinausap mo yung assumption na marami na silang alam eh. so ibig sabihin you have to do something on top of that uh, before si Jay uh, question ko anong platform uh, Instagram uh, Facebook Twitter ano anong platform ang ano or kailangan lahat lahat <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all there. They have to be everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Pwede balik tayo, no? uh, talking about leadership, no? because uh, lahat ng audience natin ngayon ay leaders. No? I believe in the older generations, medyo na-mention mo ito kanina, uh, iba-iba eh, no? yung tingin natin sa leaders. No? Before, I think talagang leaders no? being looked up to. Parang ano, mortal scene kapag... Uh, nag-question ka, no? pag challenge mo sila, dapat obey ka talaga. And then slowly, medyo nag-relax. No? Leaders are now considered uh, at one point partners naman. Diba? But for these young generations, what is a leader to them? No? What do they look for in a leader? So si Gen Y, um, tingin niya sa leader, um, someone respect, respected pa rin. Pero ang gusto niya, casual conversation. When we say casual conversation, yung, yung parang ano lang, nagkukwentuhan kayo, uh, parang not so deep in certain topics, right? So, so that you can exchange. Kasi remember, the Gen Y grew up with a parent na Gen X. And Gen X at that time, um, you know, they don't like to be very formal. Kasi sila nga yung nag-start ng work-life balance. So, si Gen Y, gusto niya casual discussion, pero very concise. Um, so, yun yung, yun yung isa sa mga gusto niyang, sa mga leaders. leaders. I can respect you, you have experience, but we can talk. Um, and you also value that I am a partner, I am a contributor to your team. Kaya, kasama ako dyan. Si Gen Z, on the other hand, ang gusto naman niya, um, what is my value? You have to tell me, ano yung value ko sa'yo? You are my leader. You, I, I respect you. Um, you have credibility. But you have to tell me, ano yung value ko? Ano yung contribution ko in you as a person, as a, in this company, and dun sa mission natin? You have to tell me you are part of that by doing this. So, the communication lang is a challenge because they rarely have discussions because they answer via digital technology and, and many platforms. But they do, they do uh, once in a while, and we need to take advantage of that, is to sit down on a cafe or in a, you know, in a Zoom meeting, short but sweet. So, meron naman yun. Okay, okay. Uh, what do, ano to, what roles do, do they see, no, their leaders playing in their life? Pareho sila, they think that the leaders is a, a parent, a guide, mm -hmm. and sometimes they see them as heroes. Mm -hmm. And because when, when you think through their, um, you know, to their makeup, why why heroes because what is the va because i want to change the world i want to be a contributor so yung leader tells them and guides them towards that path that's very important so a leader is very in in demand to say and walk the talk and also do the things that you know these guys are trying to aim for so if you are my hero i will follow you so that's the big demand now uh, related to that, uh, Philip, no? so, parang kikita ko talagang it's good to hear that they respect and they have a very high regard for leaders. And leaders will want to do their best. no? But leaders are human and they sometimes uh, disappoint. So pag na-disappoint ng leader ang Y and Z, how will the Y and Z react? Uh, will they give the leader a chance or ayoko na? I cannot trust you anymore. Paano sila mag-react? So, 
if a leader makes a mistake for Y and Z, they have to admit the mistake right in front and very, as soon as they know that they make a mistake, you have to say, I made a mistake. They are forgiving. Don't okay. brush it aside. Okay. It's better to say, hey, I made a mistake. What can we do? Because both of them will help, try to help. So, si Gen Y gusto niya makatulong kasi team, team, team siya eh. Gusto ko tumulong. Yung isa naman, you are my partner. You have my value. You will value me as a Gen Z if I help you solve the problem or make correct that mistake. I think again, it's very important to be honest and to be transparent and to admit to admit a mistake and move forward. No, yes. uh, in your experience, Jan, sabi mo eighty percent of your people are Y and Z. How do you engage them? How do you make sure that they're they're motivated to do well in their work? No, paano mo sila na na ano na nagiging uh, ensure that they're productive in the work that they do so it's it's doubly hard because now you have the pandemic and that's why um tawag nga namin babaran talaga sa zoom no um because we need to spend time like i spend time 30 minutes having coffee coffee on zoom understanding <laughs> them um sometimes i group them in tens and then i make them speak important is that you make them speak you acknowledge the problem you do not you know shut them down because they they like the conversation in fact they like talking about issues and how to resolve it and also they want to also talk about how how they are placed in the organization how the organization is doing how's the bigger organization doing how are we helping um, the filipinos find jobs so Gusto nila yon, and they want to be part of that. So very important sa kanila that you give time and you also um, respect their time. So hindi pwede yung ano sa gabi ka <laughs> mag message di ba? Kasi may oras din sila. Oh, wow. um, right. Very important yon. Kaya yung yung aming mga meetings mga 30 minutes lang may agenda, tapos may resolution. Kasi may follow through yon, and they will expect you to follow through. Mm -hmm. Again, a very important point, following through, no? Para, kasi gusto nga nila de, na something must, must happen and it should be progressing. So, hindi pe pwedeng usap lang tapos walang nangyayari. Kailangan talaga bina, binabantayan din sila. Uh, question, how do you guide them? Kasi, if they want to be parang na hindi sila nakocorner o hindi sila na parang eto na naman to. Parang, parang how do you, how do you make sure that you give them the support and you drive them to the right direction without them feeling uh, clustered. So it, initially, ang maganda kasi, um, you talk to them and discover what they like, their ambitions are, and when they tell you, you need to note that. You need to have, I learned this from you, <laughs> writing down a notebook. So very important oh. that you write them down. IB likes this. IB wants this, IB wants to do this in five years' time. So you have to do that. And every conversation is an opportunity to go back to that, whether positive or negative. When I say negative, may nangyari. Hindi maganda yung production tao o merong supply sa trabaho. So babalik tayo doon. No? Babalikan natin yung sinulat natin, uh, yung minutes ng meeting natin and say, oh, where did we go wrong here? How can we help you? Or what's your what's your probable solution? Kasi meron silang alam eh. Minsan nga nagre-research pa sila more than you. So it's just that you need to, they need to be heard and you need to confirm whether they're doing correctly or and you have to be very transparent. You you have to say you don't like it. You can improve on this. This is a mistake and just move on. And don't when when that discussion is finished, it's finished, no? Yeah. Wag mo oh. nang bilhin, wag mo nang bitwin yung, yung ano, so yung doon na lang tayo agad sa sa dapat nating gawin. Oh, wala nang wala na yung mahaba pang ano, wala, wala nang drama. drama, wala nang drama. Wala nang drama sa buhay. Uh, yeah. again, ang Y and Z are noted for multitasking. So how do leaders know and be confident that even if they do a lot of things, yung yung primary responsibility nila ay nagagawa pa rin nila? So in the in, in, in sa mga meeting no they will do 
uh, <laughs> talk to you. They will be on the phone. They will be doing that. That's okay. That's that's, that's that's normal because they can do that. At the end of the day, what is the stake is always you know we can go back to that and say hey, um, you promised to deliver this, and so at the time at a specific time you talk about that. And let let him explain, let her explain um, what happened and how do you improve on that. So, tutok talaga. Kaya nga mukha kang parent, no? Tinututukan mo talaga sila and how they do. And now, once they are, you as a leader, comfortable in what they're doing, actually, you want them to have a bigger um, ability to do things. So, assign them projects, assign them bigger tasks, um, they can collaborate with other people uh, in your team or in your agency. So they want that. They want that connectivity. They want that uh, action. Yung Gen Z, medyo siya kakaiba in a sense that he's a self, ano eh, self, um, tinatawag namin mga specialist, no? Um, may sarili silang uh, kayod, uh, magaling naman talaga sila, pero um, more of a... Um, individual contributor sila. Okay, but not all, but that's the main characteristic that I can do it on my own, DIY nga, um, and mm. then I'll, I'll just give you the results. So in many cases, we allow that to happen, but if the result is not as expected, then conversation needs to happen, transparency needs to happen, and, you know, ano ba yung action next steps? So maganda naman yun kasi straightforward lang. Before CJ si comment ko lang kasi of course during our time no pag may nakikita kang isang uh, isang tao na habang nagsasalita nagmi-meeting eh nagko-phone parang it is a sign of disrespect no again that that should not be the the mindset now again given that, that uh, this generation are really into this kind of uh, things and it is never for them a, a sign of disrespect because they can they can do that but at the same time they can be sent di ba pag tinanong mo nakakasagot eh di ba mm. <laughs> eh, kung usay talaga eh. And then warning <laughs> din natin yung mga leaders not to have long, long, long meetings. Ah. So hindi dapat sila, mga leaders hindi dapat ma-offend kapag during meetings eh, nakikita natin yung ating mga Gen Ys at Gen Zs na may ginagawang iba. No? At pangalawa, <laughs> sabi nga ni Philip, dapat yung mga meetings natin hindi masyadong mahaba. No? Uh, leaders can have, can spend eight hours in Zoom but with different people, <laughs> di ba? Not with the same people. Kasi minsan ang mistake, kung ano yung haba ng meeting ng isang leader, ay sinasama pati yung mga yeah. advisors nila. No? So dapat pala ay mga marami kang meeting, pero maligitit, maligitit, uh-huh. maraming tao. Di ba? Because sabi uh-huh. nga ni Philip, especially the Gen Zs, they want one-on-one or smaller, <laughs> smaller groups para mas, na, mas naririnig sila. Uh, Philip, in another uh, aspect naman, importante pa ba sa kanila yung sense of belongingness? Uh, how strong an influence yung peer group nila? Si Gen Y, gusto niya yung team. Gusto niya yung belongingness. Um, and he wants to stand out and be a leader again on that. Pero si Gen, Gen Z, iba na siya eh. Ang, ang connection niya, hindi dun sa unit. Nasa world. Mm-hmm. Nasa connection oh. in the digital Hello. world. Oh, yung nasa Facebook, mga friends. Those are, you know, those are the connections. Those are the, oh. that's where they stand out. That's why they like to post. They like to do a lot of, you know, um, videos for, for that. So while they can be contributors in the team, they don't necessarily have to be belonging to that team. You know, I, don't know, I don't need to be part of the team. I just can be me in contributing and giving value to this organization. But I have my own world. I have my own connection. It, it's not necessarily in the Philippines. It's probably anywhere else. Yeah. Totoo yan. No? That's true. That's true. Kasi That's na cool. connection sa kanila. No? Uh, yeah. Having said that, what kind of environment would uh, no, help unleash their productivity and enhance their full potentials? Actually, mara- marami siyang ano eh, marami siyang aspects, Jay. So, it's really on the leader side to be able to draw that kasi individuals would not um would, you know, would have different ways of um their motivation. 
and and that's why it's very important that even in a 30 minute 15 minute discussion these things are being brought up um they do not um they do not stop in 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 just saying um am i good and then after a year tsaka mo na siya kakausapin whether good or not in fact they can have a conversation 15 minute conversation daily they don't mind uh importante nga yon may follow through may mga constant communication but it's short and sweet rather than oh after 3 months saka tayo mag-uusap mawawala sila doon so very important yon in fact they don't need to even meet you face to face or on zoom you can just send them a message to say how are things and they and they appreciate that and you know transparency really is very important if you feel in the message and this is a very important thing to note sa message pa lang, whether in viber or sms or you need to have leaders need to decipher whether the person on the other side is giving you clues already that they need help Okay. And you should always offer, you know, let's talk about it. Why don't we just sit down and talk about it? Pero kailangan sa kanila, pareho, they want to have a schedule. You cannot wow. just punch in. <laughs> Kasi they, they are very connected, you know. They, they have their own, you know, schedules and things to do. So para hindi rin naman dapat ma-overdo yung managers, di ba? Kunyari, oh, text nga ako ng text tweet ako ng tweet or Instagram ako. Ano naman yung frequency yun? bago naman masabi ko na okay, teka muna, baka parang na-overwhelm na tong aking Gen Z or Gen Y. Um, yung frequency is okay. But it's important what is the message of those messages, of, of those, of those ano, no? Kasi, tandaan nyo, wala, hindi nila mahilig sa drama. Some, some leaders yes. that we know, they wanted to give you motivational, right? Motivational messages and stuff. And dami nun, marami na kayong na, marami na silang nababasa nun sa Facebook, sa kanilang mga parents. So, baka sawa na sila dun. Mas gusto nila is a conversation to say, Jay, ano ba yung nagugustuhan mo? Ano ba, ang na, ano ba issue ngayon na, what's on your mind? And they will speak freely about it. Rather than, I send you a motivational message. Okay, so magsasawa sila doon for a while. So, you need to have, you need to ask. When you ask, they will answer. In, in terms of ambition, uh, how ambitious are they compared to, let's say, uh, the Gen uh, X or the Boomers? They're equally ambitious like anyone. But this time, the ambition, again, of a Gen Y is mostly for himself. Um, what I could do for my near family, you know, close family, but it's on the self. Um, the Z is more on, I would like to invent something to be more valuable for the community. For the, mm. so, so meron silang mission out there. Mm. That they believe really well on those beliefs na I can do and be part of something. So, in the new generation, another perspective is, remember diversity. Okay. Diversity, so in terms of inclusion, that's why yeah. malino na malino ngayon in the last 10 years, yung I want to be included, I want to have my own you know, uh, way of thinking, even dressing up and standing. Mm. So, iba yun. But you will also notice that popularity of um advocacies okay so environment um, yeah. don't waste paper they are into that because remember those are issues that they relate to because it's valuable not just for themselves but for the bigger mm. community mm. Are, are um, they, uh, sorry Jay. Uh, are they conscious about titles and positions or for as long as they know that they are contributing to to the organization and to the greater good, they're fine with that. Um, that's a very good question, I because you will realize in the new, especially in the tech companies, the the supervisor, the manager, those are not anymore being used, no. So you mm -hmm. now you you now have fancy names called you know, chief growth. Uh, um, uh, what do you call this? Many titles are permutated depending on what 
you know the new generations are trying to um to say but it's not the levels mm. unlike the the boomers oh. and the gen x yeah. it's just the title and what the title represents ah okay oh. Eh iba pero ng mga iba-ibang titles na lumalabas eh no hindi na yung katulad ng dati no Correct. Um, Jay, go ahead. Meron lang tayong ano, phone-in question from our friend Mr. Eric Nickdaw. Uh, <laughs> Philip, this is addressed to you. If I manage a team of diverse people in terms of age, do I need to segregate my team as per their generation? Is that the effective way? So, pag nagmi-meeting ako, sama-sama ang Gen Z ko, sama-sama ang Gen Y ko, sama-sama ang aking Gen X, at kung may boomers pa, do I need to segregate my team? Yun ang tanong ni ating uh, friend, uh, si Mr. Eric Nickdow. My advice is, um, there will always be a meeting for the general public, everyone there, so that you can describe what is the meeting about. Um, but you need to devote time to have separate meetings for the generations. That's important. And also, each role. No? So sometimes a role uh, will be composed of certain gen different generation as well. So mas maganda yung on the role basis kasi yun yung kanilang magiging parang anchor for the, for the meeting and the agenda. But the, the demand again for Gen Y and Gen Z is that you will have to need you will have to dedicate frequent meetings but short and concise meetings on the y and z on the y and z all right thank you thank you uh, thank you also eric for sending that uh, question uh, uh philip no uh, advice lang kita na ang dami nating mga guests from luzon visayas and mindanao at meron pa tayong special guests all the way from new jersey usa <laughs> No? So, umaabot na ang ating program sa, sa US. No? So, mukhang uh, ngayon ko lang yata nakita si Miss, ano to, dati natin tong, ano advisor, si Miss Manny Santos Santiago. No? So, he's watching no? from, all the way from NG. Hi, Tito so, so, Philip. Regards daw, Sir Philip. Okay. Um, Philip, nako, ito na. The last question na ako. Okay. Um, Ang bilis, no? Ang bilis ng oras. Matatapos na tayo. Uh, for the last, ano na, no? 45 minutes na tayong nag interview we attempted to dissect, no? Quote-unquote, these young generations. So, and I know we have a number of them in the audience right now. Based on your own experience of managing and developing uh, these young generations, what do you think naman should they know and should also consider so that they will be a better match between them and the people around them who belong to other generations. No? Diba dapat meron ding mutual respect, no? give and take. Why we want to understand them, siguro dapat iintindihin din naman nila yung other generations. What can you say about that? Um, so two things. One is a good... Um, discussion again it's all about discussion casual conversation kasi yun nga yung gusto nila um number 1 they know that gen x and baby boomers they know them uh, because of their parents because of their former bosses and experiences so they know that uh, what is important is a mutual respect you know you for example um a gen y can say no and can disagree without um, you know without raising a voice or or what but the important that the respect is there in the same way that respect is mutual when a gen x and a baby boomer boss would also say you cannot say no yun yung, yun yung problema eh, di ba? in that old generation saying no or answering is tantamount to say, you don't like me. Hindi naman siya ganun. Huwag kang, huwag kang sasagot, di ba? Yun yung uh -huh. lakihan namin eh. Hindi, uh -huh. hindi na siya ngayon. Kaya nga, ang gusto nila is conversation. So that's uh -huh. important. The second point is that they need the real leaders. When I say real leaders, these are the, the heroes. Um, making mistakes is fine, but moving outside that and fixing um, the mistake 
can be a shared responsibility and accountability to the teams that you are working with. So they know that you are not perfect, but mm -hmm. you do not shy about making mistakes and you actually help, ask their help to solve those mistakes. Uh, ako, dalawang final question na lang. Ano, uh, Philip, bilis ng oras eh. Una-una, talaga bang uh, very mobile sila at hindi sila tumatagal sa isang kumpanya? Ganun na ba talaga? Or there's still a way to keep them longer? Okay. So, so I nung pre-pandemic, ganyan sila. Ngayong pandemic, they started to love their job and the job security and, you know, the, the benefits that it's given. So, it's a stereotype. It's a stereotype at the time. Kasi there were more jobs at that time. Pero ngayon, with limited jobs, they are actually now confined on little. Now, the, the interesting question is, will they be uh, as mobile or job hoppers when the oh, pandemic yeah. is over? So that is something we also would like to know. But I think they will not because mm -hmm. they have learned in this pandemic world to appreciate the simple things that you know, and the essentials that we are experiencing now. Hmm. Nakikita nyo ba, Philip, sa grupo mo and your research that they are into financial planning and they are now more conscious about saving for the future? Yes, uh, especially in the pandemic, IB, because most of them, tinamaan talaga na nawala ng trabaho and they realize the importance of saving. So, it's a really good opportunity for the insurance industry now to be able to communicate and connect this message to them because they themselves need insurance, need savings and investment. And the good thing is that they're now open, not just for themselves, but their immediate family and community. We just need to know how to communicate and connect with them. Thank you. Ito talaga, final question na, Philip. Uh, having yourself being exposed to Gen Y and Z, no? Uh, what was your biggest challenge working with them and how were you able to uh, address the challenge? So yung, yung communication is very different. My, my, my language, my behavior is very different. And so what I did was um, when I started to, uh, to see that they are not connecting with me, I needed to look for people within the group who understands them and can translate them to me. <laughs> and so we, we could have, you know, programs. Kunyari, gusto ko ng ano, rewards and recognition. Dati, gusto natin biyahe yan, di ba? Pero sa kanila, it's not anymore because they are already been traveling, right? Because yeah. of the low fares. So how can I attract them? How can I motivate them? Yung pala, they just want, you know, a special recognition, Doon sa bar, they want to have a, a night out and everything. Okay, yun lang pala. So, let's go. So, it's important that that communication is being asked. Ang sabi nga sa akin, Sir, dapat tinanong muna kami kung ano yung gusto namin. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yun yung hindi ka naman hula. Kasi ganun pala. You just have to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Philip. Ang dami-dami namin talagang natutunan. I think kami ni Boss Ivy, no? We have our Gen Ys and Gen Zs children, <laughs> pero na amaze pa rin kami so, sa mga natutunan namin sa iyo. No, very big realization sa akin. So, ibang magkaiba pala ang Gen Y at ang Gen Z. Not because sila yung magkasunod na generations. <laughs> eh, it's safe to assume na magkapareho sila. No, so magkaiba talaga. Okay, uh, but Philip, we won't let you go. Kailangan gawin mo yung fast talk. Okay? So, this is part of our program at ito yung isa sa mga look forward no, na segment natin. So, I'll just ask you questions. Very, very quick. Answer mo lang ko. Ha? Ready? Ready ka na? <laughs> okay. How many pillows do you use when sleeping? Two. Two. First love or last love? Sag Ayusin mo sagot mo last dyan. Love. Okay, buti na lang. <laughs> Power or influence? Influence. Best place in the Philippines? Benguet. Benguet, okay. Para sailing or scuba diving? Scuba diving. Pizza or burger? Pizza. Face or personality? Personality. Favorite sleepwear? Boxer shorts. 
Hard or soft? Soft. Lights on or lights off? Lights off. I want to be remembered as a blank leader. I want to be remembered as an influential leader. Okay. Thank you very much, Philip, for being so game and candid in our fast talk. And thanks again ha, for uh, making us understand better you know, the Gen Ys and the Gen Zs tonight. Uh, all the best to you and to your team as you continue to bring no and uh, yeah to bring a job for every filipino philip you're so lit <laughs> thanks uh. thank you again philip and we really appreciate your sharing tonight i wish you all the best in your uh, in your work as country country head of job street no so we'll keep in touch uh, thank, mabuhayan. You. thank you philip thank you thank you philip bye Wow, what an enlightening no, <laughs> conversation, Mr. I.D. Yes, yes, so, oh. I have lived with a Gen Y and with a Gen Z, pero ang dami ko pa rin ni re realization ngayon. Philip has uh, shared and reinforced uh, to us tonight no, what most of us already know that about the Gen Y and the Gen Z, that they are uh, confident, they are creative, they are independent, they are opinionated, they are tech savvy. They are driven so much when it comes to their career. It's projected by that by year 2030, 75% of the workforce will already be composed you know, of Gen Ys and Gen Zs. They are already redefining the work environment when it comes to technology, shorter working hours, and even less formal environment. Basta lang meron silang laptop, meron silang uh, cell phones, and they have their Wi-Fi, they are connected, they can already do their jobs. But even with this, no, nakita natin at sabi nga ni Philip, no, they still value leadership. They still value clarity. They still value having work structure. As they will soon take over leadership in more and more organizations. I think, Mr. IB, our generation, the Gen X no, and the boomers, we have this responsibility, we have this obligation to support them and to prepare them now. And the only way that we can do that is when we truly and completely know and understand them. We hope that this tonight, that tonight just did that. Yeah, I think it, uh, we had a very uh, wonderful enriching session. Uh, two points amongst the many that Philip shared. One is yung connecting is very important uh, and uh, authenticity of the leader is equally uh, valuable. Sabi nga natin, uh, we all have uh, Gen Ys and Gen Cs in our houses and uh, it's a good time and it's a wonderful opportunity to learn more about them. But as we've mentioned, parami ng parami yan sa workforce natin and they will be our future leaders. By understanding them, accepting them, and leveraging on what makes them different, we can actually best determine how to attract them, to develop them, motivate, and most importantly, retain them. And then we can create an environment that can really unleash the full potential of this uh, generation. On the other hand, while they have energy and while they have the drive, they still lack the wisdom uh, gained from the experience and from the many battles won by the older generation. So this is one area where partnership can really be of so much uh, value, combining wisdom with the innovative spirit of the Gen Ys and the Gen Cs. And the good thing about them is that they welcome guidance and support. So leaders, we've got a wonderful uh, generation before us, and it is our uh, opportunity and privilege to guide them. And as Jay mentioned, to their highest potential. Yes, truly agree, Mr. I.B. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us in our very engaging conversation with Philip. I'm sure just like me and Mr. I.B., you, uh, no, 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 parang you are overflowing no, with the new insights, with additional insights and knowledge that we got to learn about our younger generations. No? Ano, shook and stoked na ba kayo? on how they will shape our future. No, I suggest that if flex nyo naman 
no sa inyong mga sariling group chat <laughs> no flex nyo that one big idea that you got from our conversation tonight uh jay i really agree that in just a few years no these younger generations will be the leaders of our industry and i also agree though, that they value independence they will look for guidance clarity and structure and that leads us to our next episode naman next week entitled bulletproof by activity management kasi when the pandemic came uh, the lines between home and work nawala na no and therefore there is a great need for an activity management system we will be joined by miss shane perez manulife's unit head of 2020 she will share how she and her team continue to perform exceptionally well despite the pandemic through a very effective activity management system. Alam mo, Mr. IB, incidentally, Shane is again from Davao. Nakakatatlo na tayong guest from Davao. <laughs> At lahat sila ay nag-top nung 2020. Wow, we have talaga Nancy. Naman. Talaga? What? Naman, Nancy, oh. you know, uh, oh. she was the FWD number one agency in terms of recruitment. And then we had Mr. Henry Evangelista, the number one agency of Film Life, both in recruitment and production. And then next week, we will have Shane Perez, who is Manu Life's number one unit head nationwide. Oh, again, like yes, uh -huh. again in 2020. So I am so sure something else happened in Davao in 2020 aside from pandemic. At kung ano man yun, Sana ay magtuloy-tuloy no? ngayong 2021. But you know, I am extra excited to hear the story of Shane because her story you know, will tell us how she and her team manage no, to continue performing excellently no? during the height of the pandemic by using yung kanilang tinatawag na activity management discipline. No? At a time when having a system no an activity system is quite challenging no and if not almost impossible no so talagang excited akong marinig kung paano niya ginawa yon so dear leaders please do join us again next week no for our very interesting conversation with miss uh, Shane Perez of Manulife so uh, that will be next week that is already July 15 no so it's our date july 15 thursday 8 p.m here in leaders in action real leaders real stories real talk bye everyone good night bye, bye. thank you thank you